Hi everyone, this is Lao Wan reporting for Huarjie Qianxian. Apologies for getting to this late. Last week, China's two sessions coincided with Super Tuesday, a series of primary elections with massive implications for America's two major parties' nominees. But the results were unsurprising. Republican candidate and former President Donald Trump won by a significant margin in Alabama. Alaska, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, and Virginia. This prompted Nikki Haley to drop out of the Republican primary race the next day on March 6th, although she did beat Trump by a slim margin in Vermont. Biden won by similar. <clears throat> Biden won by similarly wide margins in Alabama, Arkansas, California, Colorado, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Vermont, and Virginia, and also American Samoa. Alaska hosts its Democrat primary in April. What was noteworthy in the Democrats' primaries, though, in states with the option to vote uncommitted, like Alabama, Colorado, Iowa, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, North Carolina, and Tennessee. A large turnout of registered Democrats voted in protest of Biden's continued support for Israel's campaign in Gaza. Most notably, 18.8 percent of Minnesota voters voted uncommitted, which means that the state will send 11 uncommitted delegates to the Democratic National Convention in Chicago in August. This is part of a larger problem Biden will face with his electability. Right now. Biden seems focused on appealing to the most centrist voters, operating on the assumption that winning the vote of someone who would have voted for Trump counts as winning two votes, while losing votes from the left flank of his party only counts as losing one vote. This is the cynical calculus of a tight race where Trump continues to poll better than Joe Biden. According to the site 538, Biden's approval rating has continued to remain steady at around 39%. Although Trump's favorability rating has dipped in the past week to 42.7 percent, it remains higher than Biden's. The Biden administration has been trying to capitulate and win back some of the protest votes for November. Most notably, a week ago, Vice President Kamala Harris called for quote an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Although in the same speech, she did also reaffirm quote Israel's right to defend itself. The Biden administration also airdropped food aid into Gaza on Friday. When parachutes failed to deploy on some of the aid packages, the airdrops killed five Gazans and injured many more. It's unclear if the Biden administration's paradoxical stance on Gaza will be enough to win back voters. Although VP Harris called for a ceasefire and the U.S. military did airdrop aid, the Biden administration has conducted over a hundred arms sales to Israel since the start of hostilities on October 8th. The U.S. also only airdropped seventy thousand meals, which is not enough food to go around in Rafah, where over a million people have currently been displaced. The total population of Gaza is roughly two million. This has led critics to refer to the airdropped aid as a publicity stunt aimed at winning back the support of dissenting Democrat voters. Another key element of the problem is that Israel still refuses to let the growing convoy of trucks on the Egyptian side of the border with Rafah. To deliver aid to Gazans, on the crossings into Gaza from Israel, Israeli protesters continue to block aid trucks from entering Gaza. Conditions in northern Gaza are apparently so desperate that Gazans have resorted to eating ground animal feed. It's unclear if the airdrops and call for a ceasefire will be enough to win back protest votes, but it is clear that the Biden re-election campaign is feeling its prospects of a second term threatened. By the continued disgust at Biden's administration's continued support for Israel, thank you so much. This is Lao Wan reporting for Hua Jie Qianxian. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and、uh, I'll see you in the next video.